Hi guys, Nick from Klingspore Braces. Back about a year ago, we did a project here at the company that uh, involved all this butcher block, this maple butcher block. So I thought it'd be a good idea today for us to uh, go ahead and make an end grain cutting board out of this thing. Now, normally when this takes place, you're cutting your own strips and making your own butcher block. But today I'm cheating a little bit. It's all pre-made. We're gonna go ahead and, and try to knock this thing out. So to begin with, we'll do some cutting on the saw. We're also gonna add in a little bit of uh, walnut for some highlights. So uh, we'll begin cutting on the saw, and uh, as we get uh, through each step, we'll stop and talk a little bit and tell us what we're doing, but that's about as far as we're gonna go for now. As you just saw, we went ahead and cut the uh, walnut pieces at 3 eighths of an inch wide. Uh, we're going to inset those into the cutting board as we go along. I just want to make mention that today we're using Klingspore's KSV 10-800. It's a fine trim saw blade. It's really good for, uh, for cross cutting, for ripping, a lot of different things. So uh, next we're going to go ahead and rip uh, the pieces that we need to do the end grain cutting board. But first I want to sight down this piece and make sure we've got a good straight edge to ride against the fence. And that does look pretty good, so we'll go ahead and start cutting. All right, so we're gonna make this cutting board somewhere between 19 and 20 inches. We'll make that decision once we get to, to the point to where we're cutting the ends off and squaring it up. All right, since our walnut pieces are about 20 and 3 16 we're gonna go ahead and cut the ends off all of our hardwood pieces here to match. So when we glue this thing up, it's not such a hard thing to try to get the ends matched up. I'm gonna cut all these pieces to 20 and 3 16 of an inch. Uh, instead of having to measure out each piece and try to hit the mark every time I bring the miter saw down, I've set up a stop block to be able to stop each piece and then I can just push it up there, push it up against the stop block, cut it, they'll all be the same length. All right, so we've got all our pieces cut to length. We've got uh, the sides turned up that we want to glue. Uh, if you've never done this before, it's a pretty messy process. Take a look. You 
you want to make sure as you're doing this that you get glue on every part of it. And I have a tool given to us by modern technology to spread this glue around. Cardboard. Any spot that you don't get glue on, of course, will not adhere to the piece next to it. So you want to make sure you get good coverage everywhere. And now we're not done yet. So we've got it roughly put together. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and leave it in the clamps overnight and we will come back tomorrow and uh, take it apart, square it up, and take it down to the wide belt machine and sand it. All right guys, so we let the uh, cutting board set up all night, let the glue dry really good, took it out of the clamps and ran it through the table saw and squared it up really good. Uh, we used Kling Spores KSB 10-500, which is a 50 tooth uh, combination blade. Does a wonderful job in cross cutting and ripping. And uh, we're prepared now to go over to the wide belt machine, stick a new belt in there and begin flattening this thing out. So currently in our single head wide belt sander, we're, we've got a uh, 80 grit belt in there. We're gonna knock that back to a 60 grit belt, get a little more aggressive on leveling out this uh, work piece. And for that, uh, we're gonna use a Kling Spore 311 material. It's a polyester back, an open coat, so we can get real aggressive with it and remove a lot of material. And it's a 37 by 60. So let's go ahead and change this belt out. So all total, we ran this uh, cutting board through here approximately 30 times, and you can see there's hardly any wear on this belt, shows hardly any loading, anything. This uh, CS311Y material is a great material. So we're down to the point of random orbital sanding. We're gonna start with uh, Klingspore's PS3380 grit, 
and we're gonna work our way up to 180 and then later on 220 just before we get ready to finish. All right, so we finally made it to our last step in the process, and this is the most fun part of the entire thing because we get to put some oil on this board and uh, get to view all, as all these colors come out and, and it begins to pop. So let's go ahead and get started with that. We're gonna be using today uh, General Finishes Butcher Block Oil, and uh, I've heard it's a really good product. This is not something I've used before, but you know, kind of make your own judgment on it. Uh, I think you'll be pleased with what you see. And if you want to get a hold of some of this, you can get it from Kling Spores Woodworking Shop. All right, so we've gotten three coats of oil on the board. The last thing we have to do is just kind of polish off the oil. This is set uh, approximately 24 hours. So that oil has had plenty of time to sink in and, and kind of uh, even itself out and you know, adjust the color to a point to where it's all even across the board. So let's go ahead and wipe off the excess. Kind of polish it up a little bit. And it's got just a real light sheen on it. You can just barely see it. But this board will be protected for a good long time. And the good thing about this mineral oil that we've used is that uh, you can uh, use it to maintain the board also. So you can go ahead and rub this on whenever it starts to look like it's a little bit dry. And so that will about do it for this project. I appreciate you joining us. I uh, encourage you to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And uh, any of these products that you've seen us use, you can either get at Klingspore Abrasives or at Klingspore's Woodworking Shop.